Oh man, I've got so many of these project ideas. Which one should I do next? Well, that's a good idea. Hi, my name is Zach, and in this bite-sized build video, I'm gonna recreate the classic Magic 8-Ball, but I'm gonna put my own little twist on it. I started digging through some of the displays I have, and I came up with this little organic LED, or OLED display, that's gonna be perfect for this project. Like most of my projects, I'm going to be using the Arduino Nano microcontroller as the brains for the project. I'll need to be able to detect when the Magic 8-Ball is shaken, so I've got a little inertial measurement unit, or IMU, that has an accelerometer, a magnetometer, and a gyroscope on there, which is way overkill for this, but it'll work great. And finally, this needs to be battery powered, so I have a little one cell LiPo battery along with a little charging circuit that I can plug into it. I'm really eager to get started modeling and 3D printing the actual Magic 8 Ball. So I'm going to jump on the computer and start working on that. Typically when I do a project like this, I start with the parts that I'm most worried about, especially the ones that need to fit together. So I'll do a lot of test prints and iterate on those and make sure that everything fits together before printing out the entire thing. I've drawn out all of the components that I need to connect together and this is sort of a rough schematic of which wires need to be connected where, just to give me an idea as I'm putting it together. The next step will be to take these actual physical components and connect them all together as I've shown here in the diagram. It's time to talk about the sponsor of this video. Altium Designer is a CAD solution for PCB designers and engineers. One of the coolest features of Altium Designer is the cloud workspace. As I've mentioned before, I use this feature to take my laptop on the go to continue to work on projects that I started on my desktop. But that's only scratching the surface of the cloud features. Using Altium 365 is really simple. All you need to do is log into your workspace right here in the upper right hand corner. Then when you go to open a project, just select your cloud workspace and all of your projects will be visible. 
I've had several experiences where I was doing design reviews in a professional setting and I needed to get all of the design files to various people on the team. You can imagine how cumbersome it was to make sure that each person that needed to see it had the most up-to-date version of the design. The cloud features in Altium 365 make this whole process so much easier. With version control built right in, you can always ensure that everybody has the latest design. These cloud features are awesome for design reviews, but they're also useful for things like collaborating with team members or with clients or maybe sending information to a manufacturing facility. If you're ready to take your PCB design to the next level, I would highly recommend checking out Altium Designer. I will have a link in the description where you can download a free trial. Let's go back and keep working on the Magic 8-Ball. I've got all of the electronic parts assembled. I've soldered both the OLED screen and the battery pack to the Arduino on the appropriate pins. Now it's time to put it all together in the 3D printed enclosure. This is the top half of the 3D printed enclosure. It's got a little slot in here that's designed to fit this OLED screen perfectly. So I'm going to place the OLED screen in there and tack it down with a little bit of hot glue. And then I'm going to feed the wires through the holes here and the slots and then rest the Arduino here on this slot. And this is going to be a little platform just to kind of keep things at the right height and elevated uh, so that the wires don't get crunched up.
Now that all of the electronics are assembled, it's time to move on to writing some code. I spent several days stuck on a really annoying problem while I was writing this code. When you're working with an Arduino board and you're using modules like an IMU or an OLED display, there will often be code examples written for you. I will usually pull pieces of these examples and put them into my code. So I put all of these pieces together along with my own code and I uploaded it to the Arduino board. Everything seemed to be working fine except I was getting these really weird initialization errors that I could not figure out. I sat here for days and days trying to figure out what was causing these initialization errors. I was buried deep in the libraries trying different things and I could not figure it out. I was this close to giving up before I stumbled upon a web page that started to describe some of the symptoms that I was seeing. I got really excited when I discovered what was causing the problem. These Arduino boards have a very limited amount of RAM memory. Most of the temporary variables that you write in your program will get stored in this RAM. So for example, things like print statements will get stored in this temporary RAM. If you end up writing a lot of print statements in your code, you'll end up using more RAM than there is available. This has a lot of unwanted and unintended consequences. The Magic 8 Ball has a bunch of predetermined responses, so I had those written out as strings in my code. It turns out that those strings were taking up too much space in the RAM and causing lots of problems. Luckily, the solution was simple. The Arduino boards have a different block of memory called Flash, so I moved all of those strings to that memory and everything was solved. What I'm gonna do next is to make this Magic 8 Ball into a password generator. You know exactly how annoying it is when you sign up for a new website or service and they ask you to enter in a password and you have to come up with something that's a little bit different than what you used before. This is gonna solve that problem. I'm gonna use this to generate a random string of words that will be very easy for me to remember, but because of its length will be a very secure password. Hopefully this project video showed you how to take a complex idea and break it down into more manageable pieces. If you enjoy watching project videos like this, I would recommend checking out some of my other videos that I'll post here at the end. You should also subscribe to Bite Size and consider becoming a supporting member either through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Supporting members get access to things like behind the scenes content, early video releases, and monthly hangouts. When you become a Bite Size supporting member, not only are you supporting this channel and my projects, it's also a great way for me to connect with you on a more personal level. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. My name is Zach and I look forward to seeing you next time.